team keep it clean uh this is why i, I seriously seriously this is why i really appreciate y'all so much because if there's ever anything that i'm wrong about if there's ever anything that i may have missed then y'all respectfully let me know and there, there are some people they ain't part of team keep it clean they're like oh, you're, you're stupid oh you what are you talking about you don't know what you're talking about you're talking about <laughs> There's those people too. They ain't they ain't want to team keep it clean. But team keep it clean. Thank y'all for always being respectful with it. Because yesterday, in a video um, about should Ravens fans be concerned about Marcus Peters, and my answer was yes, 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 and yes. Reason being because I said we had literally not not heard anything at all about Marcus Peters. So that was like very concerning for me. I'm like, man, because I'm wondering, like, waiting, like, when, when somebody gotta say something about Marcus Peters. But this is why I love y'all. Shout out, special shout out to my guy David D. Because he hit me up on Twitter and he sent me uh the tweet straight from Jeff Zrebic that talked about Marcus Peters update. And I was I Taylor, thank you so much, man. Cause, again, because I just did not, I did, I missed this. I missed it. He didn't send the DM and he was like, ain't great, see you stupid, you dummy, you missed it. No, he just sent me the, 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 the tweet straight from Jeff Zrebic. That was it. So I appreciate you, David. Anyway, the tweet said everything. Oh, somebody asked, um, any word on Marcus Peters' recovery? And Jeff Zrebic replied, everything I've heard has been positive. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he said, feels like mid-August return is the hope after the team returns from Arizona. And I was like, Let's... So, hey, man, that was such like a big relief. Because, you know, I had I saw some people, I think, in the comment section and maybe on Twitter some say something like that. Oh, yeah, he's expected to return like in mid-August. I'm like, well, where y'all get that from? I ain't seen nothing about that. But thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I really appreciate that a lot. And then, um, shout out to my guy, uh, Calvin. Cal hit me up in the comments section of the video. He said that he from Oakland, just like Marcus Peters. And he said that he done seen Marcus Peters running up a, a full flight of steps with the eight pack of abs and going full speed. And I was thinking, man, okay, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. And I, I was just reminded of like, man, I, I got my one pack and I got I got some work to do. But anyway, um, this is nice to know. This is nice to hear about. This is nice because this is positive news and positive reinforcements for the Baltimore Ravens um, with Marcus Peters. We all know what he brings to the team. And it's not just about his on the field play. It's about his attitude. It's about his demeanor. It's about just how he is, that, his, his swagger, man. Like, there's no, and that's not a shot to anybody else, but there's nobody like Marcus Peters uh, on the Baltimore Ravens. There's nobody like that. Because he'll, he'll talk that talk. He, he will talk that talk. Uh, but he'll certainly back it up as well. Um, he is one person that, is always um, getting into his opponent's heads. Um, he's all, always doing that. And it's funny because leading up into the draft, um, and sorry to get a little sidetracked, but this is one of the reasons why I really wanted the Ravens to draft George Pickens because I continuously called him the Marcus Peters on offense, though. The Marcus Peters on offense because he'll catch it on. He'll talk his trash. He'll, he'll run his mouth, but he'll back it up. And that every every report that we've been hearing about him in, in Steelers camp and whatnot, they've been saying that same thing. They said he's running running his mouth to veterans and all. And I'm like, oh, you you talking like that and you a rookie, but you backing it up. So hey, what what can people say? What can people say when you back it up? Uh, and then that leads to the Bengals to because what they were talking about. Remember in the pivot interview. And da, da, but anyway, what can people say when you back it up? So with Marcus Peters. This is such a beautiful thing. I, 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 I am like super, super happy about that. Because they missed him so bad last year. They, they, they missed him so bad last year. It was like, oh, it, it, it was so sad. And I tell you, I, I never forget the day he went down. The day he went, him and Gus at the same time. Him and Gus on the same day. So just doing routine stuff. Doing normal stuff. Doing regular stuff. Then boom. Their seasons come crashing down. 
And it's crazy that um, it's, it's a great thing, obviously, for Marcus Peters, but it's crazy. A lot of people that have been injured both before and after Gus Edwards, um, they, they coming back before him. Um, so Gus, he apparently just really stuff is just not so positive uh, with him. Um, but hopefully with Gus, whenever he does come back, um, and that, they obviously going to be patient with him. They're going to be super patient with him because uh, they got a lot of running backs that can um, that will help carry that workload. And see, the thing about this year as opposed to last year, which I really, really love um, when it comes to the running back room, um, is they, uh, they signed Mike Davis in May. They signed Corey Clement in July, I believe. Um, obviously drafted Tyler Beatty in the draft. Still got Justice Hill. Um, and obviously J.K. Dobbins too, but last year um, when the injuries happened to the running backs, they had to sign Devontae Freeman last second. They had to sign Latavius Murray last second. They signed Le'Veon Bell last second. Um, but so they didn't have the time in training camp. Those guys last year didn't have the time in training camp. They didn't have the time to get adjusted to the Ravens, the Ravens way of doing things, their playbook, their schemes, the Lamar, the mesh point and what. They didn't have that time to do that. But now, since the Ravens made a, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Thank you, Ravens. Since they made those moves ahead of time, then it's like, all right, those guys will have had the opportunity in training camp to really get into the flow of things the way the Ravens do it. So that, that makes such a big difference because timing is everything. Reps are everything. The more you do something, the better you get at it, <laughs> at least for most things. Sometimes it's something that we just be like, man, I, I'm terrible at this. But um, the more, usually the more you do something, the better you get at it. Uh, so that, that's how it is in football, just repetition. And again, that's a lot of stuff in life, repetition, doing it over and over and over and over and over again and just seeing different ways that you can improve and get better. And it, that's usually how it works. So I'm glad that the Ravens are, are, have been on top of things when it's come to the running back room, especially for those guys that they have coming back from injury. And, and real quick, special shout out to Justice Hill. Because he got hurt during training camp last year. And then we saw him the other night in the preseason game. The burst is there. The power is there. Like, okay, Justice, let's go, man. And I, I really, um, it's tough because they ain't going to keep everybody. But I, I'm really glad that to, to start things off, Justice Hill is making it hard on the Ravens to make that decision. Like, ooh, what are they going to do? I, I, I love that. Mike Davis, obviously, he ain't going nowhere. Um, and I feel, I feel like Beatty not going anywhere either. But I wonder if, and th we'll see what happens with Corey Clement. I feel like he right now, and it's, it's still early, we still got two more games left. But I feel like he right now, he would be the one on the outside looking in. Because um, I think right early on, they, they keep this J.K., Mike Davis, Justice Hill, and Tyler Beatty. And I think Corey Clement is on the outside looking in. Nate McCray is on the outside looking in. And then, of course, one of those two um, will go to the practice squad. Maybe two, but definitely one of those two will go to the practice squad. Now, something that I didn't even realize, and I was like, oh, we, we moving. Like, again, this offseason has been moving like crazy. Um, the Ravens have to, they got to cut 15 people. I think it's August 16th, I believe. Let me see, because I know Jameson Hensley just tweeted it out yesterday. Yeah, August 16th. They got to they gotta cut 15 people by August 16th. So I'm like, oh, already, man. Because I remember before, that's how the uh, the roster the roster cutdowns and stuff they would do it every week after a preseason game. But and then they changed it for a little while to where you went from uh, 90 men on a roster and you got down to 53 all in like one weekend. But now they they changed it back, and I forgot that they didn't change it back. So some people are gonna start to the opportunity is gonna be over soon for some people, which is uh. It's unfortunate, man. Um, one last update and probably, uh, obviously, a really big one. Um, uh, Zach Wilson. And I know y'all done all heard about this by now. Um, and, and we'll talk about this more uh, once something becomes official. Uh, but Zach Wilson, in the preseason game yesterday, he was running, taking off. And then he tried to, he tried to hit a little move on, uh, who were the Jets playing? Was it the Eagles? I think it was the Eagles, but whoever, <laughs> excuse me, whoever it was, he tried to hit a little move on him, and he ended up injuring himself, 
got up limping, then they said they, that he's going to have an MRI today. Um, I've been hearing that he's okay. Then the last night I kept hearing that, oh, it probably looks like an ACL. So we'll see when something becomes official. But that's not good for him. Um, and I don't think it might not be good for the Ravens either. Because Flacco, Flacco is the backup. So Flacco may end up being the starter um, in the week one game against the Ravens and the Jets. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, Zach will say, hopefully everything will be all right. Not even just for him to play against the Ravens, but just for his career. Hopefully everything will be all right. Cause you never want to start off like that. I know this is his second year, but that's tough, man. That's tough. So hopefully everything is good to go with that. Um, but it could be. It could be the Ravens past versus the Ravens future. So we're going to see what happens, man. I'm, um, we almost there at football season. Uh, we are one month away. From the Ravens first game. And yeah, man, it's real now. So anyway, I love y'all again. Special shout out um to, to y'all for, for, for continuously keeping me updated and being respectful about it. Special shout out to my guys David and Cal for those Marcus Peters updates. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like Marcus Peters won't be for too much longer, I'm out. <laughs>